Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new, my name is Courtney. If you're returning, welcome back. Quick shout out to everybody over on Patreon for their support. And if you're watching this video with military affiliation, thank you so much for your service. Guys, we're getting into Star Trek, the animated series. So I hope that you guys enjoy this video and let's get into it. Space, the final frontier. Oh, is it the same opening? To boldly go where no man has gone before. Look at the Enterprise dipping by. <laughs> On outward course beyond the fringe of our galaxy towards Questar M17. Mission, star charting. Okay, cool. I've cut back power, but we continue to gain momentum. She's not answering the helm, sir. So who is that in checkoff seat? <laughs> Standing by, sir. Reverse course. I can only describe it as hypergravity, Captain. More powerful than any we've ever encountered. Look at Spock. That's the source of the radio emissions. Negative star mass. Imploded matter. But every reading on it is negative. Lieutenant Uhura's voice sounded different. Because I believe someone mentioned that not everybody did this. At least I don't think. 91. Captain, there's another signal. Listen. Where is that her? I don't know. I can't tell. Our only chance is to try to get into orbit around that thing. Aye, aye, Captain. Orbital velocity. Alrighty. I'm getting that radio sound again, sir. Dead ahead and closing fast. It's on the view screen now, sir. Alright, well, let's see it. Oh, that's very interesting looking. It's a starship. It is? I thought it was an organism. It's coming from that ship, Captain. But it isn't possible. That ship is dead. Nothing except a slight magnetic flux reading. Unknown alloy. Harder and lighter than any registered metal. So something we've never seen before. Dates it as having been in orbit here for slightly more than 300 million years. We'll board her, Mr. Spock. Scotty, Bones, you'll come with us. We'll need life support belts. I was just about to ask that too. So if there are no readings, yeah, make sure y'all can breathe. <laughs> hmm, I love how they're doing this. This metal, it isn't cast or rolled. A lighter and stronger material than anything we have now every pod they've all been burst open accidents seldom have such system dr mccoy yeah this is very specific to the alternative possibility that the crew of this ship destroyed her themselves but for what reason and do we need to run back to the enterprise are you still getting that radio signal from the ship it stopped transmitting when you beamed aboard hmm, of course it did what do you make of it spot it's registering energy after all the millenniums this ship has been here? Maybe it's just reacting to them being there. I feel like something's watching us. I feel it too, Captain. <laughs> probably. And honey, you gotta trust your gut. If you feel like someone's watching you, they probably are. Now everything has come to life. Sulu. No use, Captain. We can cut our way out of here. No, phasers don't work. This is... was the control center of the starship. It's not part of the normal equipment. It's like something they jury-rigged. Something to shield this room. No form of life could survive 300 million years. Oh, we have seen some interesting stuff in Star Trek. Jim, the door. What is it? I'm not sure. It's an alien. Something's trying to communicate with y'all. It could be a ship's log or a warning. Like the last message? Anything? I may be able to get a translation. All right, Mr. Spock. Let's see what you got. Hurry up, Spock. Patience, Doctor. <laughs> Patience is a virtue. Rather than carry this malevolent life form to other worlds, we have decided to destroy our own ship. If you understand this message, run. This thing you want. Yeah, y'all need to get up out of here. Is it invisible? Wow. Something beamed aboard with you. Oh, great. Transport it back out. Yeah, hurry. <laughs> the guy just stood there. <laughs> 
triumphant cackling. <laughs> Maybe it just wants another starship to take over. One that's actually working. Automatic bridge defense system on and prepared, sir. The message said that they had to destroy their own ship. Until we learn more about it, Scotty, perhaps we should be ready to do the same. Ooh. Bridge, Lieutenant Uhu. What? Decks five and six report shutdown of all life support systems. Always something. Bones get down to the engineering core on the double. Hey, Nurse Chapel. Wait a second. I thought she was a brunette. Open the core hatch. It's no use, son. The mechanism is frozen. There's always alternatives, Scotty. See? There we go. Something's activating the ship's phaser banks. They're locking on the alien starship. Oh. Oh, wow. Power out on all but key levels, Captain. Something's going through every storage bank. It seems to be taking control of the whole ship. Of course it is. Can you rig a low frequency shield? It would have a very small field. Do it. All right, well, let's see what this does. It's activated, Captain, but only an area three meters square. Whatever that thing is, it survived millennia and a dead hawk. All it has to do here is outlast us and just take over. No. Pretty much. It must be held by the magnetic force of the dead star. And it needs a starship to break free and a crew to man it. Ah. And I have the starship I've waited for so long. Ah, well, here we go with the foolery. You will now remove the static shield from the navigation console. All non-essential systems are extinguished. You will obey me. And if I but, refuse... Right. Oh, well, there's that. Captain. Uh-uh, leave, leave my Spock alone. Remove the static shield. Warp drive controls! Do it now! I'll obey. Let him go! Darn. He's up to something. Oh, nice! Repair the warp drive controls! Obey me! Why can't you do it? It is a magnetic organism without mass, capable of symbiotic relationship with a host body. A starship, for instance. It has become the Enterprise. Well, it needs to go someplace. A slingshot effect to yank us out of orbit. Can you compute it in your mind? Of course. The engineer will need aid from my first officer to complete repairs. You will leave this orbit and plot course to galactic coordinates. These aliens are always trying to get them to go someplace. The auxiliary warp drive controls can only be operated manually. That is correct. You will activate the manual controls. Oh, we got something for you. We're dropping out of orbit. Apply full power. Obey me. The alien's voice is kind of funny. Do not destroy the ship. Obey. Obey. No, you brought this on yourself. Stand by to activate warp drive unit. No, don't. Yes, do. Activate warp drive. Please. Don't. <laughs> no, bye. So lonely. Well, this isn't the way we get what we want. Resuming outward course beyond the farthest star of our galaxy. Mission star charting. All right, animated series. I like it. I like it a lot. And I took a quick moment to go on my phone to look up some things. So that is Nichelle playing her role. It just sounded different. It didn't sound like her 100%. Maybe she just did that just to, you know, I don't know, just to do it that way. But okay, whatever. And then when I asked about Chekhov, I think someone might have mentioned in my comments that Chekhov's not going to be in the animated series. So I looked it up real quick. And it did say that something having to do with the budget. They couldn't bring the majority of the cast or like the major cast back. And I'm just like, y'all did my pumpkin like that. But okay. Overall, this was really nice. I like it. I know it's more sped up, obviously, because each episode is so much shorter than what we're used to. But I do like that we get to see, obviously, everyone, minus Chekhov, in their... What, what, what we're used to seeing with Star Trek, with the live action version of everything. So we got to see them beam up to the starship and we got to see, obviously, like the problem solving and trying to figure everything out. Of course, it's an alien. 
And I feel bad for the alien because it's like, but I'm so lonely. Well, this, this isn't, let me tell y'all something. This isn't the way you get what you want. And we keep seeing this over and over and over again with the Enterprise. These aliens get on the Enterprise and they act like they can just control everything. That's not the way you get what you want. I like what they did in this episode with tricking the alien into thinking because you would think the alien took over and just i don't know i guess this alien isn't as strong as it thought it was because when you really stop and think about it the people on the original starship basically sacrificed themselves to prevent the alien from really truly taking over so makes it feel as if this alien isn't as competent i know that's probably kind of mean but as competent or as like strong as it may think it is because they were able to trick it into thinking that they were going to crash so that's just how i feel about it so yeah cute cute first episode to start so we're gonna move on to the next one and i'm excited so let's jump on over and see what that one has in store for me we are in orbit around the planet of the time vortex our mission is to assist a team of historians in the investigation of wait Federation a minute history. i recognize that from uh, the city on the edge of forever the travelers are returning what a trip bones orion at the dawn of its civilization uh-oh Something's been changed. Who's he, Jim? What do you, what do you mean? You know Mr. Spunk. Right, I don't, Jim. Huh? Oh, something's been, yep, something has happened. I was expecting it to be one of the historians with you, but a Vulcans? Who are you? Oh, I thought sure you'd know Thalen by now, Jim. He's been your first officer for five years. What has happened? But if it's reality, what happened? Yeah, something changed, because... What in the world? I can't find one thing we did when we were in the Vortex that could possibly have affected the future. There is no Vulcan named Spock serving with the Starfleet in any capacity. Sarek the Vulcan, ambassador to 17 Federation planets in the past 30 years. 17? Woo! What of Sarek's family, his wife and son? Amanda, wife of Sarek. Hey girl, hey. The couple separated after the death of their son. What? The wife was killed in a shuttle accident at Luna Port on her way home to Earth. Oh, this is too much! The son. What was his name and age when he died? Spock. Age seven. Seven! Oh, this is good. We were scanning recent Vulcan history. Twenty to thirty Vulcan years past. The boy is recorded as dying during the maturity test. The cause one. The twentieth day of Tasmin. How do you know this? Because he went through it. My cousin saved my life in the desert when I was attacked by a wild animal. What was his name? He called himself Selick, but I never saw him after that. I am so loving this. <laughs> it was I who saved myself that other time. You were in Orion's past with us. You couldn't be in two places at once, so you died as a boy. Interesting. Is it possible for Spock to return to Vulcan and repair the timeline that has been broken so all is the same as before? It is possible. Well, that's good. I will need a Vulcan desert soft suit and boots and a small selection of streetwear. I'll order the wardrobe section to prepare it now. I want to see this wardrobe section. <laughs> and Dorians are not known for their charity. True. All right. I did have it right in my brain. And Orions, I was trying to remember. In your time plane, you will live, and so will your mother. Live long and prosper in your world, Commander Spock. Live long and prosper, my friends. The month of Tasmin. Location, near the city of Shikar. The time and place are ready to receive you. Oh, wow, without hesitation. You're a Turan, Spock. You could never be a true Vulcan. Your father brought Shane to Vulcan. He married a human. Oof. You haven't even mastered a simple Vulcan neck pinch yet, Earther. Oh, trust me, he's gonna get it. <laughs> I regret you are witness to that unfortunate display of emotion on the part of my son. You are of my family. My name is Selick. I see how all of this is uh, working out. Is something wrong, cousin? No, no. It was only that it seemed I know you. Oh, you do. Spock. Oh, whoa. The time draws near when you will have to decide whether you will follow Vulcan or human philosophy. Once on the path you choose, you cannot turn back. Yes, father. I love that we get to see this. My young cousin 
has a more difficult road to travel than others. You seem to understand him better than my husband. If only you knew, Mama. Spock will find his way. The boy goes through the Kazwan ordeal soon. Does he not? Next month. Yeah, something's not adding up. To survive for 10 days without food, water, or weapon on Vulcan's Ford. 10 days? If you fail, there will be those who will call you a coward all your life. I do not expect you to fail. This is a lot of pressure. You will not disappoint me. Not if your heart and spirit are Vulcan. Oh yeah, that's right, that. I try out. What if I'm not a true Vulcan like they say? Oh, trust me. You'll be just fine, young one. My memory is quite clear regarding the date my cousin saved my life. No, Aichaya. This is my own test. Oh, that explains it. Stay. He went to go do something prior to when it was really supposed to happen. It wasn't the actual Kazwan ordeal. Aichaya, go home. You are too old and too fat for this. Oh, that baby likes to eat. Go home, Aichaya. <laughs> He loves you. Our son and the visitor are gone. You don't think he'd harm Spock. I will notify the authorities and ask them to initiate a search. Well, I can understand. What in the world is that? Oh no. Oh, there goes the pinch. I chaya, good boy. Thank you for helping me and Aichaya. Do you think I'll ever be able to do that neck pinch as well as you? Absolutely. You're going to excel, my darling. To be perfectly honest with y'all, I wish I could do that. <laughs> you are worried about the Kazwan ordeal. I had to see if I could do it. Father wants me to do things his way. She is a human woman with strong emotion and sensitivities. Yes. What you do not yet understand, Spock, is that Vulcans do not lack emotion. We have emotions, but we deal with them and do not let them control us. Love that. Love that pep talk. The Lamachia struck him with its poison claws in the fight. Oh no. You are a Vulcan. What is the logical thing to do? I can bring a healer here. It is a long journey across the desert. I like how he challenged himself. No one else can do it for me. My life decision was made without the sacrifice of yours, old friend. I can help a little. Sleep now. My Selot fought a Lamacha in the Langan foothills. He needs your healing. You are Spock, son of Sarek, are you not? Yes, yes. Come on, let's go. Healer, I would not call you out unless a life was in danger. You made the desert crossing most efficiently. He was my father's before he was mine. Oh, wow. A Vulcan would face such a loss without tears. By understanding, every life comes to an end. This is true. Loss of life is to be mourned, but only if the life was wasted. Ooh, I love that line. I can prolong his life, but he will be in pain, or I can release him from life. Oh, this is a test. Release him. It is fitting he dies with peace and dignity. A direction for my life had to be chosen. I chose Vulcan. You have comported yourself with honor. I have some business to conduct with schoolmates. A demonstration of the Vulcan neck pinch. Our cousin taught me. Oh. Try to understand your son, Sarek of Vulcan. A strange request, but I will honor it. My home is yours if you pass this way again. I think I shall not. Yeah, he's not. Live long and prosper, cousin. One small thing was changed this time. A pet died. Well, well, well. So you two finally got back from your vacation. McCoy. <laughs> you know, I've been running the annual crew physicals. You're the last ones. Well, let's get to it. If the times were different, you would have to recalibrate for an Andorian. <laughs> if that was supposed to be a joke, Spock, I have to remind you, Vulcans don't tell jokes. Times change. Ah, love it. <laughs> I would have absolutely loved to have seen the cast actually do this storyline. This was great. I loved that we got a little bit more of Spock's background. Love seeing the, okay y'all, y'all know what I'm talking about, the little time 
I don't want to call it a time machine, but y'all know the portal, okay, from like the city on the edge of forever. As much as it hurt to see the way Spock was treated as a child, especially by his peers, we were already prepared for that because we know that it's something that, I mean, when you're Vulcan and human, it's like those sides do battle one one another. So it's like, I, I did appreciate that even though we do see it in the animated, that we do get to at least see it. We got to see Spock's dad again, and we got to see his mom, and we got to see the family pet that unfortunately passed away. This was great, and loved that, you know, you come to the realization that Spock obviously was the cousin that saved him all that time back. So it's just like, wow, this, I mean, it started out out the gate. Like I was stunned, y'all. I was just like, wait, what happened? Y'all don't know Mr. Spock? What the heck? How do you not know him? I like this, this episode. Look, the first one was cool, but this one right here takes the cake for me already. I'm just like, so far, this is my favorite one out of the two. And I love that Spock gave himself, his younger self, wisdom and helped him with making different choices that he needed to make for himself. And uh, it was so cute seeing how he was so concerned about not being able to do the Vulcan pinch. And of course we know the Vulcan pinch, you know, Spock excels at that and he excels at his logic. And it's so interesting because when you're a child and you worry about so much stuff, like stop and think about yourself for a moment. If you could go back in time and tell your younger self, hey, don't worry about this, you're gonna be fine. Or don't stress out so much about this because you know you may think this is what you want in life, but your life may take a completely different direction that you're going to enjoy even more. It just made me think about that. So I'm gonna leave it there. This one was very enjoyable. Nice job to the writers, very, very nice. So we're gonna get into the next one and I hope you guys enjoy. A huge cosmic cloud has been reported moving into the outer fringe of our galaxy. We are now approaching sensor range of the cloud. It seems to be of irregular shape. Star Trek likes its funny clouds. <laughs> Twice the diameters of Saturn, Jupiter, and Neptune together. What? Oh, that's huge. <laughs> it computes as a strange combination of matter and energy. Captain Alondra has disappeared from navigation scan. The cloud has engulfed Alondra. So did it kill all those people? Is it possible the cloud consumes planets? It seems a logical assumption, Captain. Well, that's concerning. The cloud is now moving directly toward the inhabited planet. Oh, it's inhabited. At warp eight, we will intercept the cloud before it reaches the inhabited planet Mantilles. If planet annihilation is part of this thing's nature, it might seek them out as instinctively as an amoeba seeks out food. Do we dare tell the people on Mantilles, try to save a few who could get away? Notifying them may still save some small fraction of the population, Captain. Yeah, you gotta take a pick. Lieutenant Uhura, send a priority one call to Governor Wesley on Mantilles. Aye, aye, sir. Evasive action. Aye, sir. That's not gonna work. Prepare to fire all phasers into cloud mass. I don't think that's gonna work either. No effect, Captain. We're floating inside the cloud. Looks like little brains floating. The objects are some form of highly charged gaseous antimatter. Scotty, prepare the shields for an antimatter charge. Fire. Mm, no use, no good. Double the charge. Ready, sir. Fire. Oh, that worked. It is possible. This cloud in which we are entrapped is a living thing. Wouldn't surprise me any. Those mist out there. If the shields don't stay up, we'll all be broken down into nice digestible particles. Well, that's not good. And good job, McCoy. I have a subspace radio message coming in from Governor Wesley of Mantilles. Three and a half hours, Jim. That's not enough. We'll save the children. Women and children only. It's giving Titanic. <laughs> if we assume the cloud is a living being, we must also assume it needs some kind of food. The cloud lives on the energy it converts from the planets it consumes. It is like a huge bull grazing here and there in the pasture of the universe. Okay, that's a good analogy. Lieutenant, 
Let's see what the scanners have come up with on the cloud's composition. It seems to have some sort of anatomy. The opening where we were drawn in seems to have closed, but there's another opening up there on top. We don't stand much of a chance of making it that far. You might be able to. Mr. Sulu, take us to that central core area. We just might be able to give it enough indigestion to make it turn <laughs> away <laughs> from Mantilles. I like it. Make it uncomfortable. I think we're in what corresponds to the small intestine. I was going to say something similar to that. Those villi are antimatter. If the Enterprise touches one of them, we'll explode. Huh, great. Fantastic. Mr. Eriks, try to make your way through to the opening on the other side. Y'all better drive that thing. I can't hold it on course, sir. We're using all power. And if we do stop, we'll be drawn into one of the villi and the ship will explode. Yeah, it's a dilemma. If we could get a piece of it, we'd have enough power for the engines and the shields to go on maximum again. Ah, that's an idea. And we can cut a piece of the antimatter villi with the tractor beam and transport it aboard like that. Yeah, how are y'all gonna do that? I can make a force field box that'll hold the piece of villi suspended in the center and release the force field by remote control. Good luck. <laughs> you have to be a really good problem solver to be on a starship. <laughs> Okay, good, good. Well, that gives us two minutes. Close it. I will admit, this is very cool looking. You've just given the Enterprise and Mantilles a chance to live. Good job, Scotty. The cloud is now only 42 minutes, 14 seconds from Mantilles, Captain. <laughs> only. This being does have a brain. Intelligent? It changed course from Alondra toward Mantilles. Where is the brain located? Yeah, I can see how you wouldn't be able to tell if it was intelligent or not. If we can reach it before the cloud gets to Mantilles, we might be able to save the planet. You guys will be saving this planet? Starfleet regulations. I know the regulations against the killing of intelligent life forms, Mr. Spock. But we don't know this life form is intelligent. Right, exactly. So what is it going to be? I decide in favor of saving Mantilles. I, I'm in favor of that, too. But you can't let this thing destroy over 80 million lives, either. That's what I was going to say, is either this cloud with a brain, or millions of people. The brain could be completely destroyed if we convert the entire ship to energy and expend the energy in one mortal strike. All right. Mr. Scott, prepare the self-destruct mechanism in the engineering core. Is the evacuation proceeding? As best it can. There was some hysteria at the beginning. Oh, I'm sure there was. It's only 5,000 children out of 82 million people. Wow. Bob, where's Katie? Here with me. Who's Katie? His daughter. She's 11. Why is she still there, though? Is there any way we could establish whether or not it is definitely intelligent? A Vulcan mind touch. Do we have time for that? If we focus our sensors onto the cloud's synaptic electrical impulses, the input could be routed to the ship's computer for analysis into thought. 26 minutes exactly to Mantilles, sir. All right, Spock, get at it. Well, it's worth a shot. The cloud will reach Mantilles in seven minutes. Well, we need to get this done in six. Listen to me. What? You are not alone <laughs> here. Explain. We are in a spaceship within you. So this cloud really doesn't realize what it's doing? Many of us live on the things you consume. Things I consume? Yes, baby, you've been killing people. Oh, it's right there. Perceive many somethings. They are beings. They will all die if you consume that thing. I'm going to come into your thoughts. You will come into mine. Necessary? Yes, very. Yeah, you need to understand the gravity of what is about to happen. He's the cloud. Don't move. Put some views of the Earth onto that screen. Yeah, show it human life. At least I think that's what's about to happen. Lieutenant, this is what I want. Ah! Come on. If we don't self-destruct now, all those people will die. The cloud has stopped, sir. Comprehend. Not desire to consume other beings. Good job, Spock. It would be best if you return to your origin the way you came. A Please. long 
journey will return to origin place. Oh, I love it. There is a grid at the top of the brain core. We can escape the cloud through it. What did you perceive? The wonders of the universe. Incredible. Completely incredible. Yay! We survived. I really felt like I was in the movie Osmosis Jones with the way that they were doing things, like how they basically were going through like the small intestines and all that stuff. But this was really nice. I enjoyed the fact that Spock was able to make that connection with the cloud. I had a feeling there it, it was an intelligent being, like it would be able to communicate somehow and of course as much star trek as i have seen you would think by now i would catch on to the fact that mr spot can do this but it's like every time it comes back up i'm surprised again like oh yeah he can do that scotty's always dealing with some antimatter stuff and they keep bringing up the self-destruct stuff going on with the enterprise how do i say this i enjoy the fact that captain kirk and the crew they understand that it may come to that one day that we might actually need to die in order to save a whole bunch of people it really puts into perspective how they're just so aware of what their job entails so it's really nice to see it come up every once in a while like the episode where they you finally get to see the self-destruct sequence. It's the episode, y'all know what I'm talking about, where you had the two people where one side of their face was black, the other side of their face was white, and it was switched. And you just saw, yeah, they looked concerned, but they were very much like, okay, if this is what we got to do, this is what we got to do. This episode, I love the fact that they took it a step further. And it wasn't just, look, don't just take my word for it. I want you to see what it is that you are really doing and being able to show earth and show people like running around and everything and it's like okay I get it it's a long journey back to where I came from but this is going to stop and I'm not going to do it anymore loved it I think that this one was wrapped up very nicely with a nice little bow so I do appreciate that now y'all we're going to scoot into the last one for this video and let's see what that has in store for me. The Enterprise is en route through an unfamiliar sector of space, where a series of Earth Federation ships have disappeared mysteriously during the last 150 years. Oh, great. The starship has disappeared in this sector precisely every 27.346 star years. Huh, so there's some type of phenomena happening. Captain, I'm getting some sort of subspace radio signal. Put it on ship speaker. It's more like music than a message. That's music? Sounds like a mosquito. The signal is coming from a star system. It is the Taurian system. It seems to be calling us. Strange. Yes, I got the same feeling myself. You wanted me, Lieutenant? I want you to observe the men here. Oh, is this like a mermaid siren type of a thing? Fascinating. Like a Vulcan marriage drum. Oh, they're mesmerized. Um. Looks like the ladies are going to have to save the day. Sir, what visions? We don't see anything. Y'all aren't the target. Lieutenant Uhura, call Dr. McCoy to the bridge. Sick bay, Dr. McCoy. He's probably in a trance, too. Yeah, look at him. This explains what keeps happening to these starships. It is odd that only the men are affected, Captain. I suggest... Mm-hmm. See? See? They're trying to get y'all over there. Captain Kirk is beaming down with a scouting party to investigate. Well, I hope they come back. Captain, the urgency of our feelings suggests visual compulsion. The life forms are indicated in its center. There's no apparent danger, Spark. That's what they want you to think. <gasps> oh, such wondrous, wondrous ones. ones. Y'all have the same face. Their bodies appear to function on an unusual psychokinesis level. First time I ever admired a body function. All right, McCoy. <laughs> Tonal control. Fascinating. And slightly scary. We are grateful that you heard the signal, Captain. 
The signal? I will explain its meaning later. Captain's log, star date 54 AD 3.9. Hmm. I love that detail of him slowing that down. We're here to investigate. To investigate. The women radiate the light. See, he's he's not focused. He's distracted. Oh, they occupy another compound. That makes sense. Oh, okay. All right, lady. What in the world? Spock? Probably that nectar. It's potent as saurian brandy. I keep telling y'all to stop eating and drinking stuff. Now, why are you crying? Are you being forced to do all of this? Jim. Jim. Is that like a mind control headband? Are they aging? Oh, it's sucking the life out of them. Probe directed at ship from planet surface is severely innervating to humanoid males. Exposure causes increasing weakness, possibly to point of death. Ooh. I want an all-woman security team on every transporter immediately. Let's get it, ladies. What are you doing? Taking command of this ship. You go, girl. <laughs> Soon all the men on your ship will feel as you do. They are all needed. And they will join us. Maybe the past ships didn't have women on them to fight back. Wow, she picked him up like a rag doll. <laughs> Poor Scotty. Mr. Scott, as senior lieutenant, I'm taking responsibility for the safety of this ship. Very thoughtful of your love. All right, perfect. Due to Chief Engineering Officer Scott's euphoric state of mind, I am assuming command of the Enterprise. We love that for you, honey. Nurse Chapel, until further notice, you will act as Chief Medical Officer. Yes, girls, go! <laughs> You're a Medikit doctor. I wonder why they let me keep it. That's a good question. Quatropine is a strong stimulant. Go ahead. If the lock is magnetized, this may disrupt its field. Perfect. Assistance! Assistance! All right, book it, gentlemen. The urn. It's the only place. Gosh, they're moving so slow. Just roll on in. They are not here, Thela. I have noticed that their glow diminishes when the women are not present. You mean they're actually draining our life forces? I figure since they were starting to look old. They have become more energetic and vital. We seem to be aging 10 years per day, Captain. Oh, dear. In four days, we'll be dead. We've got to contact the ship. It is wiser if I go to the temple to try to find the communicators and contact the ship. <laughs> I love it. The equipment belonging to the men of the Enterprise. Where is it? how to open it oh that was easy hurry up request rescue party all female oh this is gonna be so good <laughs> we have assembled an all-female rescue party in accordance with mr. Spock's request get it ladies greetings I am Thela yeah 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 lieutenant O'Hara of the starship enterprise head female of the enterprise Return to your ship. You are not wanted here. Girl bear. Phasers on stun. Fire. Shocking, isn't it, ladies? Search the temple. Parties of two. Th yes! There you go. Have a buddy with you. Miss Chapel. I heard Spock's voice. <laughs> Mr. Spock! Get that thing off him. Tried oh, jeez. Yeah. Shriveled up like a prune. We've got to get out of here. Yeah, that urn's gonna fill up with water. Spock. Oh, Spock. Use all ship's energy channeled to the shields. Release Captain Kirk and his men or we will destroy your temple. Wait. I will tell you everything. All right. Get to talking. And it better be the truth. They did not know this planet drains humanoid energy, but the women's bodies developed a glandular secretion enabling them to survive and to manipulate certain areas of the male's brains. Okay. It drained the men, caused them to weaken and die. To survive, we must vitalize each 27 years of your time. We are eternal prisoners. We neither age nor die. 
what about Captain Kirk and the others? Right. They're drowning. Where are they? It is the urn in the garden. Run. Run. Fire. <laughs> Get the devices off their heads. Aw, are they being rehydrated? Perhaps the transporter is the key. Can the transporter be programmed to repattern us as we were? Possibly. But this has never been done before. Suppose it fails. There's a first time for everything, Nurse Chapel. First time for everything. Transporter reprogrammed, Mr. Spock. Beam us up, Scotty. <laughs> Scotty, we're losing them. Scotty, come on. Oh, and look at that. They're back to being hydrated. <laughs> a crew of women will bring a ship back. You'll be transported to the first suitable planet. Very nice. A life of hope. New learning, perhaps love. Oh, it is a much better future than immortality. I love that. That is how you do it, okay? Let me tell you something. This one, okay. I know I enjoyed the second episode, but this one, I loved it, loved it, loved it because we got to see Lieutenant Uhura take charge. She said, mm -mm, not today, honey, not with our men. You're not about to get away with this foolishness. And she and Nurse Chapel, listen, great teamwork from both of them. Love seeing all the ladies beam down and do what needed to be done. This was great. I, this is something I've been hoping for and waiting for for a hot minute. Yes, it is in the animated, but this was fantastic. I loved it. And of course, you kind of picked up on a lot of what was going on, especially with all the men being, you know, in a trance. Again, it reminded me of like the mythology with the sirens and the men being just... Uh, you, you lose the men. You, let's just be real. You lose the men whenever that happens. So love that detail. I absolutely love the fact that you could tell with the headbands they were wearing that it was like sucking out their energy. And, you know, if it, if this event happens every 20 some every 27 years or so, it's like, OK, obviously they need something from the starship but what exactly is it and they need the energy from the men so that they can stay immortal they can keep living and i love the ending of this where there's going to be a crew of women that are going to take this group of women someplace where they can just live out their lives in a more an immortal aspect as opposed to being Im immortal they're just kind of like okay yeah we get to love we get to do things again that's what we want. And so happy ending there. Again, I really like the way that the animated series, it just not saying that the original series didn't constantly end their episodes on a good note. There was that one episode. I can't recall it to save my life, but I know that if you guys have watched all my videos, you notice that I pointed out that I it was weird how one of them ended on a, you know, we're going to end on a happy note, but the situation wasn't happy. And for the life of me, I can't remember which one it was, but it made me go, huh? Okay. So we're just going to slide past all of that, but all right, I digress with that. But yes, the animated series is really wrapping up things beautifully. And I actually really, really do appreciate that. My beautiful YouTube family, thank you all so much for checking out my reaction to these first four episodes of the animated series. I'm looking forward to getting through the rest of it. This was, yeah, this was very enjoyable. At first, I was kind of like, okay, animated, let's see what y'all got for me. And let me tell you something, <laughs> especially episodes two and four, these were just absolutely wonderful. One and three were good as well, but two and four were definitely my favorites out of this bunch of videos. If you are new to the channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and please hit that notification bell so that you guys know whenever I upload my next video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!